Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Rohan Khandelwal, your Marrow General Surgery faculty. And um, it's an extreme honor to be introducing Dr. Shagun Batra to you. Uh, Dr. Shagun Batra has secured rank one in the recently conducted NEET PG exam. And um, I, we, I would like to congratulate her from the entire Marrow team. Heartiest congratulations, Shagun. Uh, how are you feeling? Thank you so much, sir. It's unbelievable. I'm very, very happy right now. Great. So rank 13 in INICT to uh, rank 1 in uh, NEET PG. It's uh, been, in, I mean, interesting uh, last two weeks for you. Yes. Sir. How's the mood in the family? I could see your mother uh, around if, you, if she could also just uh, yeah, come in and uh, share her thoughts. I think so. Everyone would want sir. to. Hello, ma'am. Hello, sir. Hello. How are you? Hello. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Feel kar rahe? How's the feeling in the house? <laughs> so excited and happy. Can't express in our words. <laughs> it's a matter of delight and it's her hard work has paid up. Um, she worked true. hard like anything. <laughs> yeah, very true. happy. I, I completely agree, sir. <laughs> Adios, congratulations to all of you, sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> So Shagun, I know you're not feeling too well, so we'll keep it uh, brief. Uh, Shagun, I basically want to know that uh, you've been using marrow ever since your undergraduate years. Uh, can you briefly tell us uh, how did you utilize each component of marrow, uh, starting with the videos? Uh, which all subject videos did you watch from marrow? Uh, sir, I watched biochemistry by Rebecca, ma'am, and surgery mm -hmm. by you. Uh, biochemistry was such a like I was really afraid of that subject in my uh, first year. I absolutely hated it. But then when I saw her videos, it feels it felt like a cakewalk. Like and especially those little little motivational messages that she left after every Vishishu. video, they were so cute. <laughs> Right. No, absolutely. I think so. They are uh, an absolute favorite among students. Uh, those yes. motivational quotes right at the end. Perfect. No, I, I completely agree. Rebecca ma'am uh, ma makes uh, biochemistry very easy to understand and it's an absolute delight to watch her videos. Uh, great. So, um, so, Shagun, were you also referring to marrow notes or you had made your own notes? Sir, I made my own handwritten notes. I preferred okay. those over the printed notes. Right. So I agree. I, I guess in general, after interacting with a lot of toppers, most of them uh, made that effort and made their own notes. I guess the visual impact is much more if you uh, make your own notes. Yes. Great. Um, so Shagun, when exactly did you start uh, preparing? You were an undergraduate from MAMSI, which is one of the premier institutions in the country. But when exactly did you start preparing for the PG entrance exam? Uh, so my targeted preparation started in my third year, which was uh, uh, like sixth semester. And mm -hmm. I prepared throughout my third year, my final year and my internship. No. Great. So a couple of questions which come to my mind here and students always ask us this uh, question. Uh, so sub if you're a third year student, uh, and especially with the next exam looming in the future, how much of fourth year subjects should you finish in third year as well? Uh, so I believe that in third year you have plenty of time, like ENT and OFTA are not very major subjects. So nice. you have enough time to actually make notes for all the final year subjects. Like you don't have to learn them by heart or you don't have to revise them, but you should at least have your notes ready. So now when you're in final year, there's not much time in final year. You already have a lot of pressure. So that is not the time to start making notes. That is the time to revise the notes that you've already made. So there you have it from the topper. The ideal thing is to make your final year notes also in third year. I think so that would be the ideal strategy. But if not that, at least try to do as much as of, uh, of final year as you can in third year as well. What I usually recommend is at least 20 to 25 percent of it. But Shagun is saying that if you have your entire notes ready, you'll be in a very good uh, position. Great. So I think so that is very important with the next exam uh, coming up in the future. Uh, so Shakun, uh, when did you start using the QBank? A lot of questions, are, a lot of students ask us this: that uh, should we start doing it only in internship, or should we start using the QBank even during our undergraduate years? What would be your thoughts regarding that? Uh, 
Oh, sir, I had been using the QBank from my third year itself. Like whenever I read notes or did a topic, even from the textbook, then I would go to the Maru QBank and do the module for that specific topic. So that uh, helped me assess my like uh, understanding of that topic, as well as there were many more new things that I got to know which were not in the notes or the or textbook even. Okay. So, if I would repeat that in third year itself, after reading that topic, immediately you used to solve the questions. Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, how did that help you in terms of uh, reinforcing the concepts and learning new things? Yes, sir. Perfect. And um, <laughs> on an average during your internship, so this was during your undergraduate years, whichever topics you were doing, you were doing the QBank. But during internship, uh, when you were actually preparing for the entrance exams, how many modules were you approximately solving uh, in a day? So it actually depended, depended on the duty I had. Like I tried to solve modules wherever I was. Even if I was on duty, I was collecting a report. I was uh, sitting in the OPD and there was no patient. I used to open my phone and I used to solve narrow modules. So it was like uh, it was like candy crush for me. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I mean, that's a good way to look at it. I mean, if somebody can gamify it, then it becomes uh, much easier to prepare. It was a very enjoyable thing. Like all those motivational messages that came on the top after you got five <laughs> questions right. correct. So if, if you have to give a figure to it, because students, you know, would like would relate more to that. <laughs> uh, would you say five to six modules on an average yes, were you sir. solving a day? Yes, sir. Oh. Yes, sir. Definitely. Even like uh, in my preparation, there were a couple of marathons that happened, and mm -hmm. I participated in all of them, and I completed all of them. So I think that gave me a very good boost in my preparation because by the end of that month, I had the, like 150 modules done. So it was a very huge thing for me. Great, a great boost uh, to your yes. preparation. And then were you uh, very <laughs> religious in uh, doing it even once the marathons finished? Were you st still solving five, at least five to six modules a day? <laughs> like not every day, but it, like I tried to keep it up as much as I could. <laughs> Obviously, so the the down a bit. <laughs> I mean, one odd is fine, but uh, that self-discipline is very important and which is what uh, Shagun is trying to highlight that uh, if you are disciplined and determined, then things become much uh, easier. Uh, so I will ask you a few more things about the QBank. But before that, um, somebody in third year, a third year student listening to you right now, uh, in their planner, what would you want them to write down? That how should they approach, uh, and how, how should they orient themselves towards the entrance exams? What should they write down in their planner as a long term goal that this is what I need to do for all the subjects? Uh, so for like every subject, firstly, you should have a set of notes complete, preferably your own handwritten notes, because that gives you a better memory. And after you've done the notes, you should also have a question bank for that subject solved. And uh, after you've done all that, you should give a subject wise test, uh, test as well that uh, comprehensively cover the entire subject and once you do that for every subject you can do the grand tests as well which uh, basically for every subject you need to do that and in the end grand test is like your grand test okay perfect so you said that having notes of all the subjects <laughs> ready what would be your deadline to have those notes ready uh, so before internship all 19 subjects should be uh, ready Internship Great. is not time to make notes, I believe. I completely agree. So I think if you have all 19 subjects notes ready by before you start internship, I think so half the battle is already won. Yes. So that's a very sound advice from uh, uh, Shagun. And uh, uh, Shagun, in terms of um, in terms of solving questions, you said that you started doing them from undergraduate years. So how many times did you actually solve the Maro Q bank? And also, I want you to address regarding uh, how you dealt with the bookmark questions, because that is something where students usually get stuck. So over three years, I think I've reset the QBank completely two times. But uh, like I didn't reset it even once in internship, but I went through it around three, four times. So basically, how I did it was like in my first go, I did all the questions. And then after that, I bookmarked the few questions. 
then with each uh, review of the QBank, I would decrease the number of uh, bookmarked questions to a minimum level, which was basically the question that I just wanted to see before the exam. Can you give me some numbers here? Because students, you know, they come back to us saying that bookmark 4,000 MCQs or 3,000 no. MCQs. No, no, so no. some numbers would be helpful so that they can also yes, gauge sir. how many yes, MCQs to bookmark. Yes, sir. Yes. So for, for example, if, the, if a module has, suppose, uh, 20 questions. So in my mm -hmm. first reading, say I bookmarked six questions. Uh, first review, I bookmarked six questions. And then okay. I would bring it on to four, and in the end, not more than two to three questions should be left because you can't bookmark the entire QBank. It uh, takes the value of like it takes out the value of bookmarking a question. Right. So almost uh, twenty to thirty percent of questions you bookmarked initially, and then you brought it down to say five percent or so in your next uh, revision. So. Uh, so again very sound advice i think so this is what uh, after interacting with a lot of toppers every time they review their bookmarks they bring it down by 50 percent and that should be the target which you should also be doing when you're revising the uh, q bank <coughs> okay perfect so shagun moving on to the grand test now this is something which uh, a lot of students are scared of when did you appear for your first grand test uh, so, like, I gave my first grand test in third year only, but I didn't give it so seriously. It was just to see how my preparation is going. So, even in that, I scored a pretty good rank, so I was very happy. Uh, but, like, the first senior, uh, first serious uh, grand test I gave was around November, I think, November of last year. And since then, I've been religiously uh, giving all the GTs live because it's very important okay. to live the GTs live so that you get your real time rank. And I made sure that after uh, I gave a GT, I always reviewed it and mm -hmm. I looked at whatever mistakes I made so that I don't repeat them again. So give us a few tips on how you reviewed it because students again say it's a very time consuming and a cumbersome process. So any tips for them of how they can, uh, you know, in, improve the efficiency while reviewing the, few, uh, the GTs? Yes, sir. So, so, so firstly, I used to review my incorrect question only. So uh, out of that only, like I used to divide it into the uh, like if whether I knew this and I made a silly mistake. So that I never really used to bother because I knew that I knew it and I just need to be more careful next time. And the other one was that this was in my notes and I don't remember it. So for that, I just used to go back to my notes and I used to revise that topic. And another part was that this is all new. So those were the questions I actually bookmarked and uh, made note of. Perfect. Right. And uh, did it ever happen? I mean, unlikely in your case, but did it ever happen that uh, your ranks and GTs were stagnating? And if they were, uh, how did you then overcome that problem? Yes, sir. Uh, in the middle, like they weren't, they weren't stagnating. They actually went down a little bit. Like okay. not as much as <laughs> people would expect, but still I was disheartened. So right. for that then uh, I reviewed all the questions which I got wrong and then I worked on them and in the coming GTs I made sure that I don't repeat the same mistakes and it uh, it was helpful because my rank improved. Okay, perfect. So reviewing the GTs <laughs> and looking at the analysis, looking at the weak subjects and then working on them is the only way to improve. Yes. Sir. Okay, perfect. Uh, Shagun, you s told me that uh, your preparation started from third year, but let's come to, let's jump to internship now. So you started your internship in MAMSI, which is a heavy internship. You already had all your notes with you. And uh, this was, this was last year, right? Your internship? Yeah. So run me uh, from last year till the exam. How did you revise your notes and how many revisions actually took place? So, uh, like, I divided my, I planned my own schedule, like, uh, the major subjects, the bulky subjects I scheduled for my lighter postings, and the small, short subjects I scheduled for my heavier postings. So, uh, mm -hmm. my internship started in May. My first reading was done by November to mid-December. After that, I started revising. And in my revision, I didn't go through everything. I uh, I actually started, uh, I only did the topics that I was not confident about and I was getting wrong frequently. 
and i also right. made like a 20th notebook for myself in which i wrote down all this all those topics or uh, things which i was frequently forgetting so that and right. uh, that 20th notebook was something that i read uh, the day before uh, like the week before i and i cb so that helped me a lot okay so shakun first reading was 6 to 7 months and what would be your tips in the first reading to take time or uh, to stick to your schedule and you know skip a subject if you are running behind schedule no sir in the first reading you should not be doing that like the first reading you should comprehensively go through everything you have time in revision you can do the skipping in your revision phase because if you skip in the first phase only then you can't even like you can't even say ki ha ye to aata tha because padha hi nahi to kaise aata tha correct so i think so first reading ke andar even if it is taking 10 15 days more aap acche se first reading karo because that you, nobody can replace the first reading right and then be more selective in the subsequent readings okay so in this first reading when you used to read your notes um the questions when did uh, you do the questions uh, following that So I used to do them simultaneously. Like some people prefer to do it after some time, but I actually prefer to do them simultaneously along with the topic that I read. Like, and uh, after I was done with the entire subject, I used to do the subject-wise tests as well. So it gave me a lot of confidence that, like, I've done the entire subject, so I don't need to be scared of it anymore. Perfect. So uh, Shagun used to do the questions simultaneously. Some uh, other students like to do it later on to see whether they can retain the subject or not. So everyone has their own strategy. Whatever is to your liking and to your comfort, <laughs> I think so. You should follow that. Um, so uh, Shagun, first reading six months. Sec- uh, the first revision. That means the second reading. How long did that take? Sir, I started around December. To, around three months. so that's pretty much the trend so every subsequent revision you cut down 50% of the time and the third revision would have taken a month or so about yes around a month perfect and three revisions <coughs> is what you would recommend yes no okay. right so i know you're uh, suffering from urt i won't be taking much time i hope uh, you you had some halwa made by from your mom huh? that would soothe your throat <laughs> uh so shagun tell me about mbbs um, it's a stressful period internship is very stressful what were your stress busters and also uh, how did you manage uh, social media oh uh, yes sir like i was very lucky that i had a very good group of friends with me who helped me a lot like they helped me study as well as they helped me deal with my stress so never in my internship was i so uh, burnt out that uh, you know i had to take a break so they were always uh, with me and uh, we, i i was a very active quizzer so those quizzes were very helpful to me because a lot of these questions get covered there itself and right. uh, in my college uh, a lot of people have gotten great ranks in both inicp as well as neat pg and i think uh, it was our interaction with each other and our quizzing culture there which really uh, enhanced our preparation great so having a healthy environment in college a good uh, friend circle definitely helps uh, a <laughs> yes. few tips regarding social media i mean how did you manage social media yes sir i mainly used to use facebook and whatsapp so social media was kind of like a de stressing thing for me like after it i used to use it for academics as well but uh, it was like a stress buster for me but you need to be careful with how much time you spend there like you cannot keep scrolling indefinitely you need to have that discipline that theek hai ho gaya bas itna break tha and you need to stop you like just completely shutting out social media is not an option because a lot of things come there and you need to be aware mm-hmm. so it's a you should keep it at a healthy level right so it's a double edged sword so you need to yes. draw a boundary and uh, see where where you need to keep it and uh, what about uh, did you use the marolinks facebook group or the maro star students group uh, which you were a part of on whatsapp as well yes sir i was a part of the marolinks facebook group and I, it was very helpful because a lot of even though i didn't ask me it out but 
like seeing other people ask doubts i used to think okay even that, that is also my doubt so it helped me a lot and the marrow star students group as well it was the same like people used to i was more of a passive learner like people used to ask doubts and i used to invite them back right perfect uh <laughs> last few questions um shagun how would you rate this time's neat pg paper so i think like compared to uh, i know cet i found to be really really easy but uh, compared to previous year neat exams it was slightly tricky like there were a lot of questions which were pretty controversial and uh, the like the options like they had a very weird language play this time so that was one thing otherwise the question like there were no topics as such which were really difficult the topics were simple It was just the way they framed the questions, which was a little tricky. So, how would you uh, advise? What advice would you give a student to circumvent that problem? Those uh, tricky questions. How can they, you know, work on them? So, like while I was giving the exam, there were a lot of those questions which I was going through, which I was like, "Ye, ye bhi sahi hai, ye bhi sahi hai. What do I do?" <laughs> so at that time, I just used to leave it. That I come back to this uh, with a clear mind. Otherwise, I'll just stay stuck here. So I went to that first uh, reading, and I just left the questions which I was not sure of because I knew that if I put too much of, uh, I think too much about it, then that'll harm my further questions as well. So then right. I would come back, and then I would just clear my mind, even if it took a lot of time. I, but need me though, there is enough time. There is not a uh, time is not an issue there. So I used to read the question slowly, word by word, and then I would try to. Like sometimes, even if you don't know it, if you just read it, you understand their language play. You can figure out his answer. Perfect. There are some so, small I mean, words we... like "not" and uh, "except," which mm -hmm. can actually give you the sometimes answer. Miss. Yeah. Correct. So read the question thoroughly. <laughs> I think so. There was enough time in need, and if you're getting stuck at a question, move on to the other one. Otherwise, it's going to bring down your overall performance. Is what you're saying. Perfect. How many questions did you attempt in NEET and in INICT? Uh, so in NEET, I attempted all two hundred questions. In okay. INICT, I attempted one ninety-seven out of two hundred. So was this a conscious decision? I mean, or was this uh, out of your GT practice that you had decided that these are the numbers which I'm going to approximately hit when I take the exam? Yes, sir. Even in my GTS, like while I was giving the GTS, I always used to attempt more than one ninety-five questions. So I, so I found that it was better to be aggressive because uh, mm. in NEET one fourth negative marking is not that significant. In INICT one third is a more significant number. So one fourth is something that if you are slightly sure about the answer, you can take a risk. Perfect. So I think so. That's very sound advice that you should uh, <laughs> practice all your strategies during GTS. Whether to be conservative or to be aggressive, and whatever is suiting you, you should uh, implement it in the exam uh, as well. Perfect, Shagun. I thank you very much for your time. I'm very sorry to uh, you know put you through this uh, while you were suffering uh, from URTI. And uh, heartiest congratulations from our side. Any final words for our uh, users, for Marrow users, uh, uh, that I mean, which you would like to share with them? Uh, so I would just like to say, like in INICT, I need like the two weeks in between those two exams. I really didn't study much, but my rank improved. The the only difference I thought was that in INICT, I went with the mindset that my life depends on it. But in need, since I had already gotten a decent rank, I was like, I have nothing to lose. So you I had a relaxed. really uh, relaxed mindset, and I think that right. really worked wonders for me. Right. So I think so. Put in, uh, put in all of hard work during preparation, but before the exams, you should be stress-free and relaxed, and yes. that can improve your performance. Yes. Okay, so that that's very sound advice. Uh, thank you for taking out time, Shagun. Uh, I really appreciate uh, your time. Heartiest congratulations. Uh, what are you finally planning to take up? Uh, um, which subject and where? Sir, I was planning to take up medicine at PGI Chandigarh. Great. All the best. Congratulations, Shagun. Thank you and thank good night. Please uh, thank your parents also uh, from our side. Thank you. Yes, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you thank very you. much. Good night. Good night, ma'am. Good night. Good night. Bye bye.